Welcome back to the Tamanaka Collective. I uh, have had a lot of requests lately on Facebook to uh, show you a little bit about my outdoor hydroponic system. I call it Soilless Green. It's on its third year and uh, I'm making some adjustments to the drainage system. Before I used a two inch pipe with holes cut in and uh, I would just stick the drains for my Dutch bucket system. That's what the Soilless Green is, is a Dutch bucket system. It has four rows of seven buckets each and uh, it's filled with perlite and each bucket is um, redundant so they have two spray nozzles that spray nutrient solution into the perlite filled bucket that has a paint liner in each bucket so the roots don't escape very well. Um, and they go into a drain that you'll see and then they go into a sump system. It goes into a small holding container where there's a sump system and then that sump system will pump it back into the main reservoir tank, 100 gallon tank. And all of its rainwater that's collected from the these buckets actually do collect the rainwater as well. And of course I have harvested rainwater from my greenhouse roof. And that's pretty much it and I just keep refilling it. tank. A very insignificant amount of rainwater is collected from this gutter. But it fills it up enough but when the buckets over here are filled and rains then there will be that's where all the rainwater will be collected in a short time that's why I'm trying to get the drains done so that the rains that come will fill the bucket by the time I'm ready to use it and I'll begin to use it around early May so again here's the hundred gallon container that'll fill up all the rainwater there will be controls in these guys these control boxes and they control the timing and all of the controls of the whole hydroponic system the green hose is where a sump system will go and pump the water into the tank and there's a filter on it so that any sediment and all that that gets collected from the buckets or whatever just gets filtered out so an external pump that you do not see will be connected to this hose and that will provide the injection for the nutrient solution the large fat pipe in the back is where the tank connects to the, t the, the pump and so you can see all the injectors there's two because I wanted redundancy in case one of them got clogged or whatever and it's just a three quarter inch hard plastic pipe and quarter inch pipes here that go into each of the tubes and they inject all kinds of fun stuff these are 360 injectors and they just spray on top of the perlite and the plant will go in through the holes. There will be two plants here. There will be one plant here, and I've cut a hole in the top. These are four gallon buckets. And um, some of these have adjustable nozzles because I found that if it, a lot of pressure would just spray really a lot of stuff here, but not so much as the tube that you see winds its way to the second set. And by the time it would get here, there would be a trickle. So to regulate that, I put um, adjustable nozzles on the first like five or six of these buckets. And we have a Sabrina. Now we talked about the pump and how it injects into the buckets. In this container, which is like a 27 gallon hard container, half buried because I wanted it to be low for the drain, this will contain the sump pump that activates when there's more than like six inches of water in there and it will continuously pump out the water through the green hose into the tank that you see there and this means that when it rains the rain will collect into the buckets and be distributed through the sump system and that's why you got to keep attention to the meters to make sure you have the right pH and make sure you have the right parts per million and you have to constantly adjust it but other than that it's pretty automatic so let's see what else two inches up from each of my four gallon buckets is a 
drain to get so there will always be two inches of water that is constantly refreshed every hour or so when the pump goes off for a minute and it looks like my Sabrina wants some attention yes very nice Sabrina hi this is Sabrina one of the protectorates of the foundation so what I used to have was a two gallon pipe or a two two inch pipe that ran across the whole system and it was tilted you know so that all the water would go towards the drain and I would use these half inch pipes and they aren't connected they're just there's a hole just drilled in here and there's a grommet that I got from um, uh, there's a night Granger that fit the bill I just put a like an inch hole in here fit this inch grommet with a one half inch diameter and that keeps the water in but you have to replace them every year because of the sun rot and you don't want to use Vaseline you want to use a silicone based lubricant to get these in and to get these um, half inch pipes in here and there's an angle bracket in here but there's also an angle bracket inside so that there's a siphoning effect and I just have them put into the side and I don't think I can show you because all my buckets are filled but if I do I'll let you know and, and maybe take a picture so I'm replacing this system with another system that I will show you in a second this is the new system it takes an inch pipe drain instead of the two inches and it uses the same angle brackets and the same half inch but it goes into a T where this whole flow is not obstructed it's on a slight decline of course so that you can see it's not complete the the white part will the black parts will all be replaced that's what I'm doing now so what will happen was this will help almost create a pseudo ebb and flow kind of bucket because what was happening over here was that when all of these buckets started purging water occasionally they would overflow because this this was good at holding the bucket in place but it was also blocking the flow so when you have seven of these guys blocking the flow you're going to get this overfill and it starts dripping and you don't want to lose your dripping you get enough evaporation about one to two gallons a day just from the leaves when this thing's in full bloom so uh, I didn't want to have this this year so what will happen theoretically to me anyway is it will now go in and do this so when it fills up who cares if it goes back into the bucket so it'll almost like decrease on its own as the pressure is released but you know there's nothing in here to obstruct and it will just go down just fine my guess would be so that's a little walking tour of my Dutch bucket I've thrown a lot of information at you I hope that you can uh, learn and if you have any questions just let me know on my YouTube channel or you can find the Tamanaka Collective on the Facebook and ask away as well because you'll see some updates to that as well. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little walk around and when it gets all up and functioning I will um, definitely let you see that and uh, tell you more about the system. So until next time like or comment on my videos. I appreciate everything that I get for responses. They help me out a lot in continuing to make these interesting hydroponic videos, well, videos in general. Uh, have a great day.